thank you for stopping by. The stitch roadie was almost pulling her hair out, so I am glad to be distracted. I have some things to share with you, and every so often I have a humble moment. It's one of those moments where I just want to scream at myself. So what was that about? Well, I could not find the charms to um, the shepherd's bush talking. Yes, I'm all ready to work on the charms. So here's what's happened. I did not meet the deadline. Um, I overestimated the project. Has that ever happened to you? Like you overestimate the project. And I thought when I finished the stitching that that was going to be like that was the hard part. No, actually it wasn't. The stitching, I have come to find out, was the easy part. Well, at least for me it was the easy part because um, you just stitch. <laughs> you just make an X. What can I say? But you know I've... Ugh. Okay, let me just take a moment here. Let me just take a sip of iced tea. Hey, this iced, iced tea is fabulous. It, I, I got it at the store, and it said cold brew iced tea. And um, it just takes eight minutes. You just drop the tea bag in your cold water, and eight minutes later you have a cup of caffeine-free iced tea. And this one was called red, white, and blue because I think it's raspberry and blueberries, you know. Probably what it needs is a shot of something in there to calm me down because I've been running around like a chicken with its head cut off. Yeah. So today, just to back up a little bit, today I am actually working in my quilting room, which I call the beehive. I call it the beehive because I am like a busy bee in here and there's constant activity and I'm flitting from spot to spot. But I figured this was the safest place to actually stitch the charms on my shepherd's bush uh, stocking that I'm making for my middle grandson. And uh, because I have this table, uh, that I have a big sewing machine here uh, that's used for quilting. And um, it has this extended white table. So I thought that would be the safest place, not with the the you know, the um, project in my lap where I normally stitch. Um, I just thought white table and then I have my white little ceramic uh, tray here um, to dump all the beads into to start. But then I had to, uh, G and I this morning um, had some, you know, our lives are fairly chaotic right now. Um, we are uh, we are in escrow with a, uh, our place that was in downtown Portland because we no longer um, need that place because now we live here. So uh, we've been going back and forth. And on top of that, we've been trying to do a little honeydew around here. And so we ripped off these cabinets and desk out of the kitchen area that I just thought were ugly and um, loaded them up today in the truck to take them to the dump. I Both of us were shocked. It was 400 pounds of desk and cabinet. We were kind of shocked that it weighed that much. <laughs> You know, so, but we, so we, we're both pooped. <laughs> we're both pooped. <laughs> just running around, but it was a job that, you know, all that stuff was just laying in the garage and taking up space. And 
uh, we just needed to get it out of there and take it to the dump ourselves. And you can't really get anybody to help you any right now because everything is kind of a little bit chaotic. So this month we have been going back and forth downtown and um, and then uh, trying to squeeze some family time in between. So we had our youngest son's birthday was this last week and and then our middle grandson's birthday was the next day. And um, so it was a big family gathering and uh, that's always fun because um, it was um, my daughter-in-law's parents and then her two sisters and her, her middle sister's partner. And so it was just, um, it was fun to actually have, um, you know, time together. We haven't had that in a very long time, in a very long time. So, there you go. I know. I'm rambling. But back to the stocking. So, I thought that the stitching of the stocking was going to be the easy part. And just to remind you that it is the Shepherd's Bush Parker. And I purchased this at Acorns and Threads and Janine helped me get the fabric and uh, I had the kit for the um, stocking, the little beads and everything that go on there, but then I realized today that I could not find my um, beading thread or needles. I know I have some but, um, you know, it's, it's kind of like, <laughs> I still haven't found that floss. So, I, I just said, after we went to the dump, uh, I said, can we just stop at Michael's and let me get some, uh, beading thread and needles. So I did, and, um, I just wanted to get a clear color. So now I'm ready to do the accoutrements on the stocking. And here is the stocking. I went to, um, I initially started with the Shepherd's Bush site on how to finish off the stocking. And what they said was to count off, just like you would cross-stitching, and stitch a thread to do the outline. So I did that. I'm not sure I would do that again. Boy, I'd, I'd be more inclined to use a, a Frixon pen or a water-soluble pen, uh, you know, or the those fabric pens that uh, disappear with air. <laughs> if you do your project quick enough. I'm going to just close that door because the wind, there's a breeze coming in and the wind is making it go in and out. In and out. So back to the drawing board. I'm going to watch um, Vana's uh, tutorial and several others that were suggested to me before I actually cut this. Um, I did put the SF-101 on the back and um, I'm going to sew the beads on next, all the little beads. And that's what I spent the last half hour running around going, why don't I have the beads in my project bag? Um, because sometimes I drive myself crazy. Um, sometimes I just drive myself crazy. You know, I am so. Uh, and this is like this was like twenty dollars worth of little little fun things in there. So you don't want to lose that. And of course, I had them in this nice little pouch that matches my my um, bag. 
so pretty, this bag. So I'm going to pour those beads into here this afternoon, and I'm going to start the process of attaching all of that to the stocking. And then once I get it all attached to the stocking, I'm going to watch the videos. So this is not something I would not do a tutorial on this myself because I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Uh, but so far what I've done is I've put the SF-101 on the back because this is a, kind of a loosely woven. And then uh, stitched a line around by counting off the chart where the stocking should be. And it looks fairly good. It just took too long. Uh, I, you know, I felt like I was cross-stitching again. So I'm not sure I would do it that way on the next one. Yeah, because I do have another one. That is what my um, project for this afternoon will be. I wanted to show you the next one that I will be doing is called Richard. And this is for his little brother. And that one's really cute too. I'll have to find the, um, I'll have to go on to Shepherd's Bush probably and get the little charm pack for that. <laughs> My organizational skills are a lot, are not to be desired, let me just say. They're not to be desired. <sighs> But boy, what I lack in organization, I make up for in sheer excitement. <laughs> yes, I'm excited about everything. Okay, I'm going to just kind of clean this up a bit and move on. First, I'm going to have another. I hope you have something to drink because this is, we're going to need this. This is really good. I bought, it was two boxes, uh, so I bought two different flavors. I think the other one is a, an orange vanilla or something along that line. And um, so I'm all set for warm weather, which we are hopefully having next week. Yes. Today's a little bit breezy. G and I went up um, and walked up the mountain this morning because for sure it wasn't going to be raining this morning. And so far we haven't had any rain. Uh, it, beautiful clouds in the sky though. And so we walked up the mountain. There was only one other man walking the trails. And I took a photograph of a really pretty snail. <laughs> Boy, the shell was gorgeous. It was just beautiful. Mother Nature is just amazing. Yeah, I got a little traffic noise because school is back in. And uh, school's back in for like a week. It's like a week and then it's back out again. Um, yeah, my oldest grandson will be finishing school and then um, for the year. And then he's got summer vacation. <laughs> I wanted to thank my friend Danielle. Um, Danielle and I were in high school together and she sent me, uh, she goes thrifting and um, I think that's where she got this anyway. And she sent me a chart that is absolutely right up my alley. Uh, my intention is to in my kitchen area make it uh, all my stitchery uh, coffee themed because G and I do not start the day without a cup of coffee and so I received this from her and it is interesting I've never heard of this designer um, you and I and friends and you is E W E and I E Y E and friends out of Denver, Colorado. 
and the photograph isn't very good because um, it's kind of dark, but this particular chart is called C is for coffee, and I am not sure you're going to be able to, there's a cup of coffee and it says C is for coffee. I'm going to be doing that. Thank you so much, Danielle, because I will add that to my other coffee pillows and decor in my kitchen area. It's so interesting. Um, there's so many designers, you know, and I love the way this, uh, it's like this little envelope and then the chart's in there. It's fun. Very, very fun. I had um, a couple of finishes. Well, one is not totally finished. I looked through my um, selection of lace and pom-poms and I did not find one that I really liked, which resulted in a trip on the internet to Lady Dot Creates. And, you know, you just can't let a pom-pom travel by itself. I ended up ordering several packages and colors of pom-poms. But the pillow is done. I went ahead and stuffed my little Be Mine Valentine pillow. It's very sweet. And the back, I used the heart fabric by um, Kelly Ray Roberts that you can get at the Stitching Post and Sisters. So I'm waiting for uh, a kind of a more pinkish type pom-pom. I had some red pom-poms, but it was just too red. I love red but it was just too red for this project. So I thought I'd rather go with uh, a, a shade of pink. But I'm counting it as a finish. Actually, because I got an email that said the pom-poms were on their way. Yeah. It feels good to um, get something fully finished. My second fully finished object was the stitch along that I was doing with the Fat Quarter Shop, the hashtag sail away sell. I struggled a little bit with how I was going to stitch it and how I was going to finish it. And the main reason being is I wanted that chain border to go all the way around, but I understood why it didn't. So I had to figure out how I wanted to finish it off where it was not going to drive me crazy. Yeah. And I come from a family who dreamed about sailing and then who made that dream a reality. Unfortunately, my dad died at a very young age. He had a heart attack. And he wasn't able to um, realize his dream and his dream was to sail around the world. When I was stitching that uh, stitch uh, I was thinking a lot about him. We had some amazing times only because luckily for me I did not get seasick. Uh, my poor sister, she, she couldn't even get on the dock without getting seasick. So I was out on the water a lot. Um, <laughs> and we had some fun times. One time my dad and I were sailing and we were really sleepy. You know, like sometimes when the, um, the wind dies down, and then your sail just kind of lofts back and forth and you're just kind of rocking along, not moving much. You get real sleepy and tired and so we kind of both fell asleep. 
and suddenly there was this huge noise and it was an oil tanker <laughs> that was fairly close. I mean, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, you could hear the horn. And so we were scrambling to, to move and, you know, get going. And uh, it was just a, a moment. It was a fun little moment. But there were scary moments, too. And one time, uh, from where we took off, we were trying to get to the Santa Cruz um, Yacht Club. And it should have been only about a three-hour sail. Does that sound familiar? A three-hour sail. But a storm came in. Thirteen hours of tacking back and forth. My parents were both um, afraid that one of us would get washed off the boat. Uh, my dad ran a he ran a line on both sides of the sailboat uh, up and down, and we would wear harnesses and clip to the line. So there were times when you were in a storm, if the water washed over the boat, you would actually float off the boat, but then you never got lost because <laughs> you were attached to the boat with the harness. So those people who say that sailing is just this luxurious, bikini-clad, Mai Tai type of uh, event, not so much, not so much. So when we got to Santa Cruz after 13 hours, and we could see the harbor for hours before we got there, my parents had made me go down below uh, down in the cabin, because they just didn't even want to worry about me. Well, that's where you get sick. That's where you get sick. And I had, I was sitting on the floor of the sailboat, and I could hear my parents yelling and pulling the sails and, you know, cranking down the sails to make them smaller, and I was just up chucking everything I had in my body. Uh, into this five gallon paint bucket and by the time we got to Santa Cruz you can't if you've ever been horseback riding and you've ridden a long time and you get off the horse you feel really short and kind of weird well when you get off of a sailboat when you've been listing back and forth uh, you have like these wobbly sea legs and so we made our way up to um, the building, uh, kind of <laughs> looking like three junk, drunken sailors. And I told my dad, I was a teenager at the time, I told my dad, I promised God that I would become a nun if we survived. <laughs> I don't know if I've told you that story before, but let me tell you, on my wedding day, when my dad and I were waiting to walk down the aisle, he said, you know, you're going to go to hell for this. You promised you'd be a nun. <laughs> well, that was a long couple of stories just to show you how much I enjoyed this finish and this stitch by the Fat Quarter Shop. So there we go. I found this board at Hobby Lobby and I loved it because it was the map of the world and my dad always wanted to sail around the world so I thought it was perfect and then these two charms uh, well it was like ornaments I just glued on what I did was I cut a piece of poster board the size that I wanted my piece to be and I used the same size piece of fusible batting. So I have fusible batting and a board with my piece. And then I glued it like you do a flat fold. Uh, and then I glued that to this board. And this board already came with the, the rope. And I just glued on this little ornament and this metal. Um, decoration that I got at Hobby Lobby and I just love the way it turned out.
and I'm making my, uh, the room next door is like a playroom for my grandkids and also a guest room for girlfriends that show up. I'm making it all um, ocean themed with my, um, with a focus on my parents because I am grateful. I'm grateful for the adventures. But isn't that just so wonderful? I just am so tickled with how it turned out. Once the, once the bed arrives and we get the room a little bit more organized, I will um, hang that up. Yeah. Well, what else? Oh. Leo. Well, Prairie Schooler uh, Santas. Totally addicted. Totally addicted. I have to have one going all the time now. I'm only on my second one. What am I talking about? But I have to have one going all the time. I can tell. I am only stitching this. I didn't bring it up. It's downstairs in the living room. I'm only stitching on it when I'm in the living room. And I'm only in the living room first thing in the morning because that's where G and I have coffee. And my little folding uh, daylight halo lamp that is perfect for down there. Uh, and I think I'll just, if I could get one done a month, then I'll have like six or seven done by December, which is great. That'll be a great little pillow display. That's the plan. That's the plan. Of course, we know, we know, we know how plans go in my life. I have been working on another project. I've shown you this, but I will show it again. It's a Satsuma Street. Leo, and I chose this only because my youngest grandson's name is Leo, and I wanted to make it for him. And maybe I'll get that done by his birthday. So there we go. I chose not to do it on the black. I tried to do it on the black. No can do. No can do. But I really like, I really like it. It's very, very sweet and um, I think it'll be a nice little wall hanging for him. I'm hoping, it's kind of crazy schedule right now, but I'm hoping to get back into that rhythm uh, with my pandemic stitch and my um, trees, get those back into some kind of a rotation until we get this business done and um, July is fairly packed. I have uh, a week down in Sisters. I'm doing a four day, um, four individual days of Zoom classes where I'm uh, demoing hexies, hexies, wool stitching, embroidery, um, and um, sashiko uh, just as a little demo and then just get to stitch with people. I'm doing four days of that, and then the quilt show is a go for um, the community of sisters, which is an awesome, awesome um, event. I'm a little bit concerned because I called yesterday to find out if my postcard got there um, that I stitched and sent to have framed for the auction, and. Uh, so far, it hasn't turned up. Hope, hope, hope. We can only hope. What else? Going camping at the end of July. 
camping in Sisters at the beginning of July and hoping to the second week of July have my oldest grandson come visit. And I would like to see if he is interested in stitching. I did teach him to sew pillowcases one time when he was like about six or seven years old. So he's not totally unfamiliar with the sewing room. But it'd be fun if I could, um, yeah, teach him something along that line. But we'll see. We'll see. He's now an 11-year-old boy. Oh. He's so sweet. So sweet. But that's it. That's all I got for you today. I am so happy that you came. I am looking forward to, oh, when I see on, on, you know, I've been watching uh, some floss tube early in the morning, and I, you know, between stitching between the lines, and, oh, kindred stitcher, uh, when they talk about the retreats that they have went on or that they're going on, I am trying to figure out how to get to one. I really want to go to one. And then, um, who else have I been? Oh, hey, Cassie Jo Stitches, her daughter. <gasps> oh my gosh, she is absolutely adorable. But I love the tip that, um, you know, because Cassie Jo already finished her pandemic. Oh, she's quite this, uh, you know, productive stitcher. But she gave a tip that was pretty, I mean, it really piqued my brain. And that was how to keep your momentum going on a stitch where there's like a lot of dense stitching and how she changes colors and then stitches that whole color and then she'll move on to a different area and stitch a different color and when that thread's gone then she comes back here. It was genius. I thought it was genius. Um, so I plan to to try to implement that in my life. I'm just trying to pick up all these tips. Isn't that why we watch Floss too? Well, you guys probably watch me because I just make you feel better about your organized life. Yeah. Because you're not learning anything from me. <laughs> but I'm learning a lot from other, um, other Floss tubers. It's just um, highly entertaining. You know, uh, Stitchy Witch 42 makes me laugh out loud. I enjoy the interviews that Sambri Stitches do, does. It's just finding the time to um, actually um, watch. So it's when I get up early in the morning, I come in here and I am uh, bring my stitching in here with me because the laptop is here and I'll watch while I'm stitching in here so I don't wake up. Gee. Uh, the channel you need to be careful of is the 911 Stitcher because she shows so many new things that make you want to run out and, and, and do all the things and buy all the things. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's a good life. And you should check out, I wrote an article. Uh, I write a blog. I don't know if... Uh, I'll, I'll put the link below. I've written a blog for years, years, and I enjoy writing. Uh, so that's why I continue to write a blog. It is a whole nother place for me to put thoughts down. It's where I take my quilting world and my stitching world and my personal world and meld them all together with what I think. And I wrote an article. It's not really an article. It's a, you know, a blog post. I wrote a blog post uh, on uh, Tuesday about uh, where you can print it off and it's a letter to your family on your craft accumulation 
and you can put it in with your will, you could put it in that book that you keep for your last wishes, whatever, and you can amend it as you want. Just copy and paste it to your um, paper and then change the wording if you want, fill in what you want to fill in, but it's kind of like an overall guideline about our stitchy life and how we feel about it. So go over and take a look at it. I think it'll help. I think a delivery is being made. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Okay, gotta go. Thanks for stopping by. I love it. I love our time together. And you take care, okay?